Hannah, may I have a word with you? Hi, Jennifer. Sure, what is it? I really wanted to have an important talk with you before you get married. Okay, what is it you want to talk about? First, I hope you have a firm understanding of your role as a wife. Yes, I'm aware of that. The most important thing is to produce an heir. In order to keep the family line alive, it is of the utmost importance that you give birth. Give birth? Of course we are thinking about having a baby someday. Someday is too late. Once you get married, you have to prepare for that as soon as possible. A daughter-in-law who can't give her mother-in-law a grandchild is useless, to be honest. Yes. And you must be devoted to your husband. When he comes home, you prepare a meal for him and make the house a comfortable place for him. Of course I will. I will keep that in mind. Furthermore, always stand up for him. No matter how tired he is when he comes home, it is your duty to make sure he feels at ease at home. I see. I understand what you're saying, but I also want to continue working. Work? What do you think you're doing, continuing to work without fulfilling your duties as a wife? Don't you think you should focus on being a housewife first? Work is also an important part of my life. Besides, in this day and age, it is usual for a wife to work to support family's finance. I understand that, but you should put your family first. You can only be called a good wife if you can support your husband. I will make every effort to support him while balancing housework and work. I wonder if you really understand me. It's kind of unworthy of you. I will do my best to live up to your expectations. I hope you will. If you have any problems, talk to me right away. If you can't fulfill your role as a wife, I won't keep quiet either. Thank you very much. If I have any questions, I will consult you. I hope you'll fulfill your duty well and become a fine wife. Yes. And there is one more important thing. It is also important that you apologize first to keep the relationship between you and your husband happy. When your husband makes a mistake, don't get angry, but gently point it out. And always remember to be grateful. Yes, I will try to do that. Only your reply is admirable. What? Can I really expect you to do it? Do not slack on cleaning and laundry and do it properly every day. It is a wife's duty to make sure the house is always clean and cozy. I will try to do my best to do so. I don't expect much from you, but I do hope you fulfill your duty at least. Yes, I will try my best. Hannah, can I talk to you? I don't understand why you haven't contacted me in a while. I think it's quite normal for a wife to contact her mother-in-law frequently to keep her posted. Hi, Jennifer. I'm sorry. I'm busy every day, and it's late at night before I knew it. You're so quick to make excuses. You'd better get that sort of thing straightened out. I'm sorry. By the way, is there something wrong? Hannah, like I asked you the other day, when are you planning to quit your job? Huh? I think I have told you that I'm not planning to quit my job. Oh my god! Are you still talking like that? You can't keep joking around like that. I'm serious. Hannah, you've been married for four years. How long do you plan to keep working? When a woman gets married, she is supposed to stay at home and take care of the house. I've told you that many times, so please understand me. It's normal for a married couple to work together nowadays. I want to work when I can and save money too. You can't save money if you continue to work from home like you do. So quit your job and brush up on your housework skills. With all due respect, Jennifer, 
I do everything right around the house. I do make meals. I do clean the house and so on. So please don't worry. Please don't worry? How could I not worry? When a person like you and my son Nathan got married, I can never be at ease, can I? I even take care of his personal affairs properly. I think there's nothing for you to worry about. You may say that, but I don't believe you. Do you do all the details of the household chores properly? For example, ironing his shirts. Do you even clean the toilet every day? Of course I do. Nathan's shirts are always ironed and finished neatly, and I clean the house every single day. I think it's important to keep things clean every day. Really? You say that, but in reality, you are cutting corners, aren't you? No, Jennifer. I really do it properly. I think it is my duty to balance both housework and work. In order to do the housework perfectly, you have to quit your job. If you work while you are working, one of those two will inevitably be neglected. You should spend more time for Nathan. Even if you say so, I want to take care of my career too. I understand what you're saying, but in this day and age, women are also expected to work independently. I believe that by valuing both family and work, my life with my husband will be more fulfilling. You sound so cocky. My husband and I talk about this a lot. I hope your naive thinking doesn't hurt us someday. We will get through anything that comes to our future. Are you seriously saying that? Nathan is just too kind to say anything to you. He often tells me about the things that he doesn't like about you. When he came to my house the other day, we ended up talking about you. I didn't expect the conversation to be so lively. That means... Does that mean you got into a lively conversation by bad-mouthing me? Hey, I'm a good listener. I just enjoy listening to his stories. It's the same thing. Don't talk back to me every time. In the first place, you're not trying hard enough as a wife. You need to learn more from me and become a nice woman. If you don't, I don't think Nathan will be too happy with you. Did he say something? Well, he did say a few things. He said you can't even cook a good meal, and you're at home just chilling all day. What? I'm not chilling all day. I'm working. Is that true? Well, you can say whatever you want about yourself, can't you? I'm not lying, and I've finished my work by the time he comes home so that I can prepare dinner. Even when he's off work, I do my housework. What is it with you talking like that? Are you saying you work harder than Nathan? I didn't mean it that way. The reason you have to work on his days off is because you usually work so slowly, right? If you were a person like Nathan who can work properly on a daily basis, you wouldn't have to work overtime and you wouldn't have to do things on his days off, you know? My job has deadlines, so when I'm busy, I'm really busy. I do feel bad about bothering you and Nathan. But no matter how busy I am, I always do my best to do my housework. Just doing your best isn't good enough. I really don't know how many times I've told you that people with no brains don't understand. I still can't believe that such a person is Nathan's wife. I wonder why he chose such a person to get married to. I'm sorry. Now, listen to me. You apologize like that every time something happens. But it's not enough to apologize. Apologizing won't make you better at housework. That's true, but... Besides, Hannah, when are you going to get pregnant with Nathan's child? Excuse me? It's been four years since you got married and you can't conceive a baby yet? You're not thinking about having a baby, are you? No, wait a minute, Jennifer. There are circumstances to this. I don't want to hear your excuses. I really feel sorry for Nathan. 
You can't even do your own housework and can't conceive a child. No, Jennifer, there's a good reason for that. My son has been married for four years. I'm unhappy too, not being able to see my first grandchild. Sorry about that. Nathan and I will talk about it properly next time. So please don't talk about the grandchild too much. I think it's because you've been spoiled like that that you haven't been able to have a baby. You can't do your housework, you can't work, and you can't even have a baby. Really, you have to consider divorce, don't you think? Huh? Divorce? Yes, that's right. A woman like you who is a failure is not suitable for Nathan. People who keep making excuses like that are out of the question. If it was going to end like this, I should have opposed the marriage. I allowed you to marry him because I expected you to be a little more capable. I guess I was wrong. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're still young. I'm sure there are plenty of suitable men for you. I'm sure you'll meet someone if you're active in marriage. I doubt that. Of course you will. Your face isn't that bad. Well then, that's how it is, so please, think about it. But Jennifer, Nathan and I have vowed to support each other. We are both trying to work things out together regarding our children. But I didn't know that's what you were thinking. To be honest, I am sad. Well, love is not enough to keep a marriage together. Nathan could have married a better woman. With the way things are now, with you neglecting the housework and the children, I have to consider divorce. For the sake of Nathan's future. Divorce is something I have never even considered. I hope you will rethink your actions and make a choice that is truly in his best interest. Marriage is not just about the two of you. It's about the whole family. Depending on your attitude, I will take serious action. I'm just trying to make Nathan happy. Yes, Jennifer, I understand. Hannah, I'll give you a fun topic to talk about. Is now a good time? Hi, Jennifer. It's been a little while. I'm curious about the topic. What is it? You know what I mean, don't you? I wonder if you thought about what I said the other day. What do you mean by that? Don't talk like you don't know what I'm talking about. About you and Nathan's divorce. Oh, about that? Have you decided to get divorced? Well, I know you don't want to. You're relying on his salary to live your life. You can't get a divorce, can you? No, I'm divorcing him. What? Do you know what you're saying? If you get divorced, you'll have to live on your own. Do you really think you can make it work? You've been living comfortably thanks to Nathan, so suddenly being on your own will be harder than you can imagine. You have to cover rent, living expenses, and everything else by yourself. Not only financially, but also mentally. It will be very lonely and difficult, don't you think? Yes, I know. I've been working all my life, so I have savings. I have a good salary, so I don't think it will be a problem. I have been managing my finances all my life and have been saving steadily without wasting money. I have enough money to cover my living expenses, rent, and other expenses. So I am confident that I can live on my own. Your salary and savings are just a little, right? The world is not that sweet and rainbow, you know. There's no way you can get divorced. Tell me when you start earning your own money. Nathan makes half of my salary. Huh? Half? Yes. I think the salary I receive every month is twice as much as his. No, no, no. That's not even funny. What do you want with a joke like that? You can't try to trick me like that, okay? You don't have to believe me. I can work from home because I am a web writer. I'm not a lazy person. My work is very busy, 
and I am often pressed for time to meet deadlines, but I get paid well for it, and I take pride in my work. A web writer? That profession doesn't ring a bell for me. I can't believe you're working on the internet. I wonder if such a thing can really provide a steady income, but I don't care about that. After the divorce, of course you're going back to your parents' house, right? No, I will continue to live in this apartment. What? But the apartment belongs to Nathan, right? You are going to leave, and I am going to live in that apartment with him. I don't know what you're misunderstanding. This apartment was bought in my name when we got married. It does not belong to him at all. What? I am earning more than him even before we got married. We chose this place because it has my workroom. But, you see, there is no such thing as joint property, isn't there? I wonder what they will do with that after divorce. I wonder. But this apartment was purchased by me before we got married. Nathan can just take the car. Oh, no. Oh, and since this is a good opportunity, I'll tell you something else. About the child you have been making so much fuss about. The cause of not conceiving is not me, but Nathan. What? Is there something wrong with him? What do you mean? I mean it as it is. It means I'm not infertile, but Nathan is. What? That's a lie! So even if he divorced me and got together with another woman, you won't be able to see your grandchild. It's a lie! There's no way that's true for my son! I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's the truth. Then there will be nothing left for my son. He has some debt. Huh? Debt? What are you talking about? If he divorces me, he will pay me alimony. Well, to put it worse, I think it's a debt. Why would he pay you alimony? He didn't do anything. Huh? Didn't I tell you? Your son was cheating on me at work. What? Cheating? Yes, I'm sure of it. Because I asked him about it and he admitted it. The other party was a junior employee of the company, and she also admitted it. Oh, no. He cheated on you? Oh, by the way, I've already consulted a lawyer, so don't worry. We were going to get divorced sooner or later anyway. I'm grateful to you for suggesting a divorce. Wait a minute. Hannah, please calm down for once. For now... Let's put the divorce on hold and talk about it with Nathan and the three of us. No, that's okay. I made up my mind when you told me to get a divorce the other day. But Hannah, look, I'm sure there will be many inconveniences if you get divorced. It would be better to talk about it properly before that happens, wouldn't it? I will leave everything to my lawyer, so that's fine. I'll talk to Nathan myself. And this is the last time I'll talk to you. Wait, Hannah. Please, think again. It was you who urged me to get a divorce. Oh, wait a minute, Hannah. Are you sure that's what you want? I'm going to wait for you to reconsider. Nathan loves you and I need you as my family. No, Jennifer. I think this is the best choice for me. Do you really think so? Do you think you won't regret it in the future? I'm so worried about your ability to make it on your own. Don't worry about me. Oh, no. Hannah, please help me. Nathan came home last night and I'm in a lot of trouble. Please listen to me once. I'm sorry, Jennifer, but this is no longer my business. No matter how much trouble you are in, please don't ask me for help anymore. Don't say that, Hannah. We are family. I want you to solve our problems together. No, Jennifer. Just because we are family does not mean that everything is acceptable. This is the result of you spoiling him. From now on, you must take responsibility for yourselves. Besides, I don't consider you and Nathan as my family anymore. But he is suffering so much. 
What should he do without you? That is a question that he should think about. It's nothing to do with me anymore. Are you sure about that? Yes, of course. Do not contact me again. Oh no, that's too cold. I want to take care of my own life too, so please don't contact me. You should reflect on your own life too. Hey, Hannah, don't say that. Goodbye, Jennifer. Have a good life. After that, Nathan and I officially divorced. He seems to be having quite a hard time paying his alimony. Not that it's any of my business. The divorce became known at his work, and his affair naturally spread as well. He couldn't stand the cold stares from those around him, so he ended up quitting the company. Now he's back at his parents' house, living off his mother's pension. I'm sure Jennifer never thought that her son would end up like this. I heard that there were constant fights between them every day. After my divorce, I devoted myself to my work. I am now living in peace. From now on, I will put my own happiness first in my life. Armando, sorry for the sudden message. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, no problem. What's up? You had your checkup today, right? Did something happen? No, the baby is doing well. They told me it's still early, so I need to be very careful. It's my first pregnancy, so I need to do a lot of research. There are so many things I don't understand either. Maybe you should just let nature take its course. You're going to be a mom, so there's a lot to look into. I'll support you as much as I can. My parents are very happy about it. Um... What's up? I was just thinking that you're going to be a dad too, so you should be more than happy. Besides, not only supporting me, you need to study too, okay? I think parenting is supposed to be done together by husband and wife. Okay, I'll do my best in my study about being a good dad. Your parents passed away early, and the only close relatives are your grandparents. If you're going to have the baby at home, it'll be at my parents' house. So let's go home together this weekend. Actually, about that, let's try to do our best together as much as possible, okay? I'm not thinking about going back home because I want us to do our best together as a married couple. And maybe could you tell your mother to hold off on the visits for a bit? What's wrong with you? Why are you saying that all of a sudden? She came to our house almost every day without an appointment. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to be stressed out in the future. What are you talking about? You won't be stressed out since you don't need to take care of mom. She's my mother. Mom wants a carefree relationship with you too, so you can depend on her more. She's the only mother you have, right? But she doesn't even care when I was lying down with a migraine. She just entered the house, then said that if I keep lying down, I won't be able to give birth to a healthy child. She forced me to eat lukewarm vegetable soup too. She peeked into the fridge and stole things like ham and cheese. She made me clean the house with a rag because she thinks that I don't clean well enough. I can't do that since my morning sickness gets worse nowadays. Well, it's true that our house is full of dust these days. It can't be helped. What did you say? I heard that my grandmother also educated my mom strictly about that. That's the way it's supposed to be. I don't mean to take her side, but I can understand why it bothered her to have the room filled with dust. She only grows enough crops for her own family now, but she used to be a hard-working farmer. I'm grateful for my mother's kindness. After we got married, until I told her I was pregnant, she's been a very good mother-in-law keeping a good distance from me. I feel like she's suddenly changed. 
maybe she doesn't want any grandchildren. No, that's not true. Both my mom and dad are really looking forward to see their grandchildren. I'm sure of it. Anyway, I'll let my mom know that you don't feel comfortable having her visiting our house every day. Thanks, that would be great. She usually comes in here in a bad mood and often gives me some lectures about how to clean the house and hang the laundry. It's very stressful for me. She also told me that when she was at my age, her mother-in-law used to laugh at her if she couldn't do cleaning properly. She is full of sarcasm. I felt so depressed. I think this isn't good for my baby too since I'm pregnant. Don't worry about that. I think she was only joking. My grandmother was very strict, so maybe that's why mom wants to discipline her daughter-in-law in the same way. The fact is, you don't know much about house chores, so why don't you be a big girl and learn from her? It's good to learn, isn't it? What kind of mother-in-law was your grandmother? Did she bully her daughter-in-law? What? My grandmother spent her last years in a retirement home where she died, but she was a kind, normal grandmother. By the way, my dad said we can do whatever we want with our warehouse. Are you talking about that old warehouse behind your parents' house? You said it was full of junk and hasn't been opened in years. So what are you going to do with that old warehouse? It's old, but it's sturdy, and there's a huge carpet inside. I heard that giving birth at home is the latest trend. Is that so? I've never heard of it. I think giving birth at home is a good idea. Pregnant women can give birth in the most relaxing place. The whole family can wait for the baby. And there's no need for immediate hospitalization. There may be some disadvantages, so I'll have to look into it. What if there are hygiene problems and some other emergency matters? Well, I think it will be nice to have the whole family to support the childbirth. It doesn't sound like it would cost a lot of money either. I feel there are a lot of advantages for giving birth at home. If you are being stingy and I end up in an emergency room at the hospital during childbirth, you'll have to pay more for that. It's my first childbirth so I want to make sure I have the best support. Okay, well, we'll talk about it later. So, if you're going to have the baby at home, you can have it there. What? So, you can clean up inside. Except for my dad's fishing gear, he said we can throw everything away. I'm glad to know that you can give birth to the baby at home. What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? I just told you, didn't I? I'm not going back to my hometown, and I'm not having the baby at home. Don't say that. Let's just get this over with one step at a time. Wait a minute. Don't decide on your own. I'm the one who's going to give birth, remember? I'm sorry that mom said all those terrible things to you. Huh? I'm having a hard time since you don't get along well with mom. Next weekend... Let's go thank my mom and dad together, okay? Thank your parents? I'm going back to work. I might be a little late today. You always come home very late whenever you say that. Just come home early today for sure, okay? It's important. We need to discuss it properly. Well, it's for my lovely wife, so I'll do my best. That's a promise you must keep. We had this conversation, but my husband, Armando, came home after 10 p.m., and he was drunk, so as expected, I couldn't talk to him. I guess maybe he feels that it's hard to suddenly become a father. We had been married for two years and had been taking it easy, letting nature take its course and hoping to have a baby when it came. My husband doesn't really understand about pregnancy and childbirth, and my mother-in-law is a control freak woman. I'm a pregnant woman who is having a headache every day by dealing with people like them.
Cindy, where are you? I heard you ran away from home. Are you aware that you're in your last month of pregnancy? Where in the world are you? I'm at our apartment. I can't do this anymore. Seriously? What are you talking about? You're going to be a mother soon. You need to be tough, and you're not trying hard enough. If you don't get your act together, the baby inside you is going to be worried. It's just impossible. I went to your parents' house today because your mother suddenly called me. That alone was hard enough. Not only the relatives, but even the neighbors were gathered there. Then your mother suddenly introduced me to those people. I had to serve tea while struggling with my big belly, and everyone asked me lots of questions. And then they all went on and on about the ins and outs of giving birth at home. What on earth was your mother trying to do? They're all concerned since it's your first time to give birth, so don't take it personally. The culture in the countryside is just like that. People treat you as a family member. I heard your mother gave birth to you in that warehouse. She was working even in the last month of pregnancy and went out to the fields right after the birth. She told me in a very grumpy way, I don't want to suffer from the same fate. Yes, I heard that my mother gave birth to me at that warehouse. It's in the countryside. She said that a midwife helped her during the childbirth. That must have been a memorable birth, right? Of course not. Besides, I heard that your grandmother took the baby. I can't imagine a childbirth like that. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. Are you telling me that your mother will be the midwife during my childbirth? You gotta be kidding me. I started shuddering just by thinking about it. Of course she will. You need a certificate to become a midwife. And mom has it. That's not what I meant. I don't want my mother-in-law to be there for my childbirth. I don't want to be seen by her. But I might be at work when you go into labor, so I won't be at your side. Don't you think it would be safer to have someone by your side at that time? No way. I don't feel safe at all with your mother beside me. I'd rather be alone than to be together with that grumpy woman. What's wrong with you? You seem to be hysterical. Is there a problem with your hormonal balance? It's hard for me too, being caught between my wife and mother. Just listen to what mom tells you. It's as simple as that. If you don't get along with my parents, you are going to face more hardship in the future. Huh? What do you mean by that? I'm the eldest son in the family, so I have to live with my parents sooner or later. I didn't hear anything about living together with your parents. You are the eldest son, and the farm owned by your family is now out of business. That's what your mother said when we got married. We should create a lifestyle together that fits us. I don't think we have to live together with your parents. You're so silly. Why can't you understand mom's true intention? Our ancestors have been farmers for generations, and it must be hard to give up the fields we inherited. That's why we need to live together. I'll work outside the house, and you can help the farm with my parents. We're going to have a baby. It's the best timing, right? Oh my god, my stomach's aching. Seriously? Are you okay? I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe I'm just too excited. I'm going to the hospital from now. Pull yourself together, Cindy. The baby is my parents' long-awaited first grandchild. If anything happens, call me right away. I'll call you later. Cindy, where are you now? You just texted me that you're going back home and you need some time alone. I don't understand it all. What on earth is going on? Please explain to me, Cindy. I'll let mom know about this, okay? I don't care if you regret it later. You finally read my message. What on earth were you thinking, Cindy? 
Where have you been all this time? I've asked your grandparents and your friends, but nobody's heard anything from you. You only left a short note, but you read my messages, so the police wouldn't take any action against you. I'm so anxious, you know. Can you tell me what happened? I was at your parents' house the whole time. Huh? You said you were going to report to your mother. You never called your parents even once. Can you explain that to me? Were you afraid that your parents will find out that your wife ran away from you? It's not like that. It's just, I didn't want them to worry. Well, that's okay. After you finish your work today, please come over to your parents' house. My parents' house, okay. How's your health? Are you eating enough? By the way, I took the food delivery and ate some instant food all the time. As my wife, you should take responsibility for that. I'm fine. Your mom taught me how to make molokea salad. Oh, that's good. It's a wife's duty to learn the taste of her husband's family. But I thought you hate molokea. I'm proud of mom because she made you overcome your dislikes. It was hard when I had morning sickness, but now it tastes great. We grow vegetables in our garden. You should ask mom to teach you how to farm too. And you should keep eating it. Why don't you learn from your mother then? Well, farmers need strong women to take care of everything. My father doesn't do much work. I don't think a man would be of much use. Why don't you let mom teach you? She's a good teacher. You don't get many great teachers like that nowadays. Yeah, she was a really good mother-in-law. You know what? Molokea is rich in folic acid, which is necessary for pregnant women. Also, you should avoid ham and natural cheese in the first trimester of pregnancy. I was surprised when I looked it up later. I'm ashamed of my ignorance. Your mother is really well-educated. Glad to hear that you're willing to accept the fact now. You should thank mom and listen to her. If you do that, you'll be safe from now on. Are you trying to live together with them now? You should have said something to me about that. I'm sure we'll have a great family now. Five of us, including the baby, and we'll live happily ever after. Once again, looking back at what you said, it's really irritating. Messages are so handy in a situation like this. What are you talking about? I saw the messages you sent to your mother. Huh? The more I look at those messages, the more I realize how much it sucks. You told your mother that I want to live with her and her husband to help the farm in the future. Also that I want to raise my child in the countryside and help to bridge the gap between your parents and the people around them. I didn't say anything like that. How dare you told so many lies to your mother? I thought it would go more smoothly if I said it was my wife's idea. I've been thinking about it a lot myself. You told your mother that since I grew up with my grandparents, she'll have to be very strict with me. Moreover, you said that I'm a penny pincher that I don't want to hire someone to do the housework? So you told your mom to let me do all the housework. I can't believe you convinced your mother to be a snitch. What on earth are you thinking? I've never heard of a son forcing his own mother to be a wife beater. Your mother must have been in a lot of pain. To call my mom a wife beater is an exaggeration. She was just trying to educate you so that you can be a good farmer's wife. I don't think so. Don't say it like your mother did it. It was your order, wasn't it? To top it off, she said it was my dream to have a home birth and that I want to use the warehouse where you were born. Those are lies. I was just trying to do the right thing. Stop kidding me. Your mother is almost neurotic over this matter. That's why she's so grumpy. I can understand her feeling now. What? Why? Isn't it exciting to have a son and a grandson born at the same place? 
Are you crazy? Where in the world would a pregnant woman like to give birth in a dingy warehouse with zero sanitation? Your mother had no choice at that time because your grandmother was bullying her. I feel sorry for your mother. What do you mean by bully? Your mother cried and told me that she was in pain because she remembered what her mother-in-law did to her. Can you explain the details? Crying? Why? Your grandmother was the worst woman in the neighborhood. She must have been a terrible person. No, she wasn't. She was a kind grandmother to me. The neighbors were really surprised when you were born. You're not even 30 years old yet, so it was only 30 years ago. It wasn't during the war or anything, okay? In those days, most mother-in-laws made their children's wives work like slaves and bullied them like forcing them to give birth in a dirty warehouse. Both lives of the mother and child were in danger because there's a high possibility of infection during the childbirth. That's why she only gave birth to you. You didn't know that, did you? Your mother is suffering alone. I didn't know about that at all. If it's the trend nowadays that I want to use the warehouse for childbirth, she'd like to respect that. But she wanted to convince me to give it up because it wasn't safe after all. That's why she got the neighbors and relatives all gathered to tell me the details about home births. I think that's her true intention. It was a form of kindness from the neighbors and your mother. I feel bad that I didn't listen to everyone's opinion calmly at that time. I had no idea about that. To me, my grandmother was a kind woman who had a lot of knowledge about everything. I wonder why she was bullying my mother. I think it's because your grandmother was a penny pincher. I'm sorry, but really, I was just trying to be a nice husband to you. I didn't mean to make you or mom suffer. As the conclusion, I'm divorcing you. Huh? What are you talking about? Calm down. No one would allow you to do such thing. First of all, what are you going to do after the divorce? You're heavily pregnant and you have no relatives to rely on. For your information, I have parents. What? Your parents died and you don't have any siblings. Did you lie to me about that? To be precise, I now have parents. I'm going to be adopted by your parents. I'm so happy that I could cry like a baby. You're divorcing me because of that? I don't understand. Stop talking nonsense. Your parents are going to cut ties with you. No kidding. I'm their only son. I don't think they'll do that. They said that you are a stupid son. I could tell how hard it was for your mother to cope when I saw her messages with you. When you actually tell her to become a wife beater, she told me that you sounded just like her mother-in-law. She doesn't want to see your face because you remind her of what your cruel grandmother said and done in the past. I don't think my mother would say such a thing about me. I didn't order her to be a wife beater. I just thought, that's how the relationship was with wives and mothers-in-law in the real world. In a way, you're also your grandmother's victim. I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe you're right. Even if your parents adopted me, it would be legally difficult for me to keep you apart from me. As long as you're alive, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't come near my parents' house. They have agreed to leave me as much of their property as possible in the form of a living will to their grandchildren. I'll take care of your parents on behalf of you. I don't need you anymore. Oh no, what am I supposed to do from now? You'll end up just like your grandmother, dying alone in a retirement home. No way, give me a break. I'm sorry for what I've done, Cindy. I'll listen to you wholeheartedly from now on. We'll raise the child together, okay? The child in your belly is mine, right? I'm also obligated to raise the child. Are you telling me that you still don't understand your current situation? What do you mean by that? It's too late. 
My love and affection for you have worn out. Even your mother said the same thing. I was just trying my best to be good to my family. To be honest, I'm not blaming you for ordering your mother to become a wife beater. The main reason of our divorce is, I can't take any more of your insensitive word choice and attitude. My child will suffer too if I stay married to you. I'll leave the rest to the lawyers. Please talk through them if you want to talk to me. Wait a minute, Cindy. Armando was very stubborn that he refused to cooperate and did not agree to the divorce. It was quite a struggle, but after the baby was born, we somehow managed to get divorced without incident. Of course, I gave birth at the hospital. My first child was a healthy baby girl. In the end, it was probably a good thing for my daughter's sake. The relationship between me and Armando's mother is very good now. I can live moderately well with my daughter between us. I'm very thankful for her support. About Armando's father, he's being nice to me, but secretly, I think he's afraid that his wife is going to divorce him after what happened with Armando. That's why currently, he's trying his best to be devoted to his wife. I think it's a good thing. I don't know what the future holds for me yet, but I would like to discuss it thoroughly with my family. Sorry to bother you out of the blue. You are Elizabeth, aren't you? I beg your pardon? Let me ask you again. Are you Elizabeth? Well, yes. I've been asking you questions since a while ago. I wonder why you can't understand me. You do understand my language, don't you? I can understand you, but I don't know who you are. I was just wondering how you got my contact info. I'm the one who asked you the question first. So can you please stop asking me back? Oh, I'm sorry. So you're Elizabeth, right? Yes, I am. Who are you? Why did you text me out of the blue? My name is Adria. Oh, you don't know me by name, do you? But I know you one-sidedly. One-sidedly? How did you know me? I've never even heard of your name before. Who are you? Oh my god, you're so irritating. There's only one reason why I decided to text you today. That's because you are in my way. What? I don't think you're supposed to say that to a person you just talked for the first time. Isn't that a bit rude? Why did you say that? I was just trying to tell you the truth. You're getting in my way and you irritate me. I just want you to go away as soon as possible. Um, I don't understand at all. I have no idea who you are, and I don't want to be called irritating by someone like you. You're too rude to say that all of a sudden. I'm only telling the truth. To begin with, I can feel how annoying you are by the way you talk to me. You were hanging around him... Just because he likes you, it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want. That part of you is annoying too. Him? Who are you talking about? Stop joking around, will you? Of course I'm talking about your boyfriend. I'm his childhood friend. And we're the best of friends. Childhood friend. I think he said he has two male childhood friends in his hometown. But I've never heard of a female childhood friend. Could it be that you are texting the wrong person? Don't worry about that. That means he hid the fact that I existed, right? He had to hide it. If he tells you that I'm his childhood friend, he'll have to explain about that when you meet me, right? That's why he lied about me by telling you that his childhood friend is male. Although, we've been seeing each other so often lately. I'm sorry that you don't know anything about this. He's not the kind of guy who would lie. 
Besides, I don't have a boyfriend. He joined the family and he's my husband now. What? You got married? Well, yes. We just got registered three months ago. You didn't know that? I didn't hear about that. No kidding. I was going to go out with him. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, my husband is not a liar. You are Adria, aren't you? I've never even heard of you. So I think you're texting the wrong person. Could we end our conversation here and don't get involved with each other from now on? Absolutely not! You just don't know anything about me. Then how do you think I was able to contact you? I have no idea. Will you tell me about that? I borrowed his phone and found your contact. So, there's no doubt about his relationship with you. Also, I've been seeing your husband regularly, and we have access to each other's phones. I see. So that's how you got my number. It has to come from someone who knows my contact info, and in this case, it was my husband. That's right! Now you understood, don't you? I'm your husband's girlfriend. Your husband is having an affair with me. I feel sorry for you because you don't know anything about it. Affair? Like I said before, it's absolutely crazy. I've seen pictures of my husband's childhood friends, and they were really two men. There is no sign of any woman around at all. It's obvious, isn't it? That's just camouflage, you idiot. Anyway, he's mine, so get the heck out of my life. I don't care what you say. If you don't want to leave, I'll make you regret it. Be prepared. You just need to look forward to it. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for the other day. Um, who are you? Huh? Are you serious? We just exchanged some messages a few days ago, didn't we? I told you that I'm your husband's childhood friend and girlfriend. Is your memory really that bad? Or maybe you're just stupid. Are you no better than a chicken? Oh, I remember you now. You were very rude to me on our first meeting. I didn't feel good about it. You're rude too! So, what is it? What can I do for you? I was going to tell you something good. But looks like I've lost interest in that already. Well, I can tell you if you really want to know. I see. Well then, goodbye. Wait a sec! You can't just say that to me. I said I'm going to tell you something good. Don't you want to know? You told me that you've lost interest in telling me that, didn't you? I don't think I want to know anyway. No kidding! Okay, let me just tell you. Next time, I'm going to have a drink with your husband and my other childhood friends for the first time in a while. I'm really looking forward to it. What do you think? Are you upset because you're not invited? Not at all. I'm not even sure if you're really my husband's childhood friend. Why should I be upset? You still don't believe me? I've heard stories about you. You really are a stubborn woman and also annoying. Stubborn and annoying? Did my husband say that to you? That's right! He told me that you like him a lot, but you don't admit it honestly. You're such a stubborn woman. He also said that you're troublesome. If you don't show that you like him, I believe your husband will dump you. There's no way he's leaving me because of that. Besides, my husband has never called me stubborn. He would never call me troublesome too. He's not the kind of person who would say such a thing. I asked my husband about it the other night when you sent me a message, and he said that all of his childhood friends are men. He said he didn't know anyone named Adria. 
Who the heck are you? I told you that's just camouflage, right? He's hiding the facts so you don't know I exist. Isn't that normal? It proves that he has a special relationship with me, don't you think so? In other words, I'm like a girlfriend to him. I'm going to get him at the next party. Well, I don't believe you at all. What are you talking about? It's all true. If everything you are saying is true, do you know what you are doing? If you are really having an affair with my husband then what you are doing is adultery. That means I can take legal action. I'll have to charge you alimony. What are you talking about? There is no way you can do that. You can't even file a claim for alimony without proof. I'm not going to let you get any proof. I won't screw up for sure. I see. You have a lot of confidence, don't you? Of course! I'm going through a lot of trouble myself. Don't underestimate me. What? Oh, well, whatever. That's what this is about. If you don't want me to take him from you, then fight me back. See you later. Hi again, Elizabeth. How are you doing lately? What is it this time? Now isn't a good timing for us to have a conversation. I don't care. Besides, I'm feeling better this way. I'm so excited that I can't stop smiling. Excited? What do you mean? Wait a minute. Did you forget already? I told you the other day that it's been a while since I've had a drink together with my childhood friends. Today is the day. Even your husband is looking forward to it. You heard about that, didn't you? Huh? What are you talking about? Of course not. How is that possible? Your husband is drinking next to me right now, and he's heavily drunk. He's being so sweet to me. He's so cute, and I can't stand it. He really is a spoiled brat. I wish I could show you how intimate we are. I told you it's impossible. My husband is watching a movie at home with me right now. He's right beside me. He's watching a movie beside you? Today's movie is about that famous detective. It's my husband's favorite movie. Of course I'm joining him. I've been preparing for that since a few hours ago. Famous detective? What a lame movie. You kept saying that you love my husband, but you don't know about his favorite movie? Well, that's strange. I don't know about that, and it doesn't matter. I mean, will you stop lying to me? He's right next to me right now. We're having a drink together. He's beside me. If what you're saying is true, then it's a different person, okay? You're so persistent already. Your husband, Jackson, is mine now. I don't care that you're his wife. Just get the heck out of my way. You're too annoying. Wait a minute. Who's Jackson? What? Why are you asking that stupid question? He's your husband, isn't he? For your information, my husband's name is Eric. No way! I thought that your maiden name is Roberts, isn't it? No, you're wrong. My maiden name is Anderson. I became Roberts after marrying Eric. No kidding! I can't believe this is really happening! I don't get it. I'm really confused. I thought Jackson is your husband. No, he's not. I don't know anyone named Jackson. I think you're talking to the wrong person. What? I don't understand. So, are you really at home right now with your husband, Eric? Yes, I told you. I'm watching my husband's favorite movie together with him. Oh, I see. I just heard all about it from Jackson. You're cheating on him too, aren't you? What are you talking about? 
You have a husband named Jackson, and you're cheating on him. So that's why you're with Eric now. I can't believe you dare to cheat on your husband. Well, I'm not cheating. Eric is my husband, no mistake. You're lying. Jackson is now in shock. He said that he can't believe you cheated on him. That's shocking, isn't it? Poor Jackson. Now you're the one who must pay for the alimony. That's so stupid and doesn't make any sense. Do whatever you want. See you in the month. Long time no see, Elizabeth. How have you been? Sorry, do I know you? Hey, stop saying that again. Why do you always forget me every time I text you? That's quite rude. I'm just kidding. You're Adria, right? I remember you. Oh, you remember me? Of course I do. How could I forget a silly woman who misunderstood everything about me and my husband? You're as rude as always. Well, you can't act like a big shot anymore. After all, Jackson is mine now. Well, you were cheating on him, so it can't be helped. Jackson, I told you the other day, didn't I? I said that my husband's name is Eric. The guy called Jackson, whom you're talking about all the time, is not my husband. You've got the wrong guy. I can't believe that you're really stubborn. You're driving me crazy. Jackson said that because you're cheating on him, he decided to cheat on you too. You don't have to divorce him, but your marriage is over. It's not over. I thought what you said was strange from the beginning, but it was really just your misunderstanding. You still don't understand, do you? What do you mean? Jackson is your husband, and Eric is your affair partner, right? I know that much. Just admit it. I couldn't understand what you were saying, so I did some research. And it turns out that Jackson is a complete stranger. I'm sure of it. Huh? I asked Jackson to show me your picture. If he isn't your husband, he wouldn't have your picture with him. How do you explain that? He's a stalker, isn't he? Seriously? What do you mean? Actually, I've only told my husband about it, but there have been a few uncomfortable things that have happened over the past few months. What do you mean by weird things? The first one was when I got a message from someone named Jay, whom I didn't know at all. He was saying that he loves me. At that time, it was so creepy, and I immediately blocked that person. After that, I received several letters in the mailbox of the apartment where I live with my husband with creepy contents. Wait a minute! That's totally a stalker! It's dangerous! I know. That's why I told you so. That culprit is your favorite Jackson. Huh? Hold it right there! You're kidding, right? Don't lie to me just because you're frustrated. No, I'm not lying. I was surprised too. At first, I talked to the police, but they didn't do anything. So I asked a detective to investigate about a month and a half ago. And the day before yesterday, the results of that investigation were reported to me. My stalker's name is Jackson Robinson. It's him you're talking about, right? Stop lying to me! There's no way that Jackson is a stalker! That can't be true! I was surprised too. I never thought that Jackson, whom you were talking about, was the stalker who had been bothering me. I have a lot of evidence now, and I have reported him to the police. Don't worry about that. Huh? You reported him? The police are on their way to Jackson's apartment right now. No way! How dare you? I won't let you take Jackson away from me, never! What on earth do you think you're doing? I don't care whether you forgive me or not. Instead of worrying about that, why don't you worry about yourself? You might be in danger. What do you mean? The results of the investigation I ordered from the detective included you, of course. 
It seems that you were meeting Jackson on a regular basis since they got your pictures together with him. Isn't that obvious? He likes me more than you right now. I told him we've been seeing each other frequently. No, that's not what I meant. You have a husband, don't you? Huh? The detective was smart enough to check out your background, too. They found a picture of you with your husband. You were having an affair, right? Oh, no. I didn't know that they would check my background. And when my husband saw the photos of the results of the investigation, he said that you are his colleague. What? Colleague? What do you mean? Your husband, Sean Morrison, is my husband's colleague. It's really a coincidence, isn't it? Are you kidding? How could there be such a coincidence? No way! Coincidences do happen, don't they? So my husband is contacting your husband right now. What? Wait a minute! That's a lie! Did he tell my husband? He didn't say anything unnecessary, did he? I can hear you over the phone right now that you sound really angry. Seems that you're going out today, but you should be careful when you come home. Your husband will definitely get mad at you. You've got to be kidding me! What have you done? If he finds out about this, I'm in huge trouble! I know that. You deserve it anyway. No kidding! It's your fault! Because you did some unnecessary things! If you hadn't contacted me in the first place, none of this would have happened. It's all your fault for misunderstanding. Oh dear. Well then, let's end our conversation here. I'll be blocking your number as well. Please don't contact me again. Wait a minute! Hey, please! You gotta persuade your husband somehow to explain to my husband that everything was a misunderstanding. I can't do that. Oh no! Goodbye. Also, good luck with the explanation to your husband. After that, Adria kept texting me, asking me to help her, but I blocked her. I heard that she went home with a very pale face and tried to somehow fool her husband about her affair. However, the photo evidence sent by my husband left her no room for excuses. That's because she was in most of the pictures. In the end, Adria was charged a large amount of alimony and got kicked out of the house by her husband. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.